produced a total of only six goals. Saints were encouraged by their midweek win over Hibs, united by their good old record overall in Path. Commentator, Rob McLean. On Tuesday night, St Johnston won at home for the first time in six months. That doesn't stop Sandy Clark making a change to the team. Danny Griffin steps back in after playing for Northern Ireland in midweek. Graham Jones goes back on the bench. So this is the team which drew here with Rangers ten days ago. Griffin's return reshuffles the defence. Steve Frail is pushed up to right midfield. John O'Neill and Paddy Connolly up front. Alan Ferguson has the chance to claim the goalkeeper's jersey for the rest of the season. Scotland squad man Alan Main has gone under the knife. Opportunity knocks two for 20-year-old Paul Gallagher. Canadian Pat Onstad is on international duty, so Paul takes over from United number one Alan Combe, who was injured in training yesterday. That's one of three changes made by Paul Sturrock. Darren Patterson is back into the defence with David Partridge suspended and Jason DeVos playing in the Gold Cup final. Stephen Thompson gets a starting place after his two-goal subs appearance against Alloa in midweek. Stephen McConnellog drops to the bench. Bernard Pasquale moves from central defence to full-back to accommodate Patterson. Thompson's partner up front is the rejuvenated Jim Hamilton, who's scored three times in the last two games. The referee for St Johnston against Dundee United is Jim McCluskey. Dundee United start the match in the knowledge that they've won three out of three against St Johnston this season. Twice in the league, once in the League Cup. But St Johnston lifted by the fact that they recorded a win at McDermott Park in midweek, which was long awaited. Good run made by Paddy Connolly. Pulling Morris Malpass out of the central area. And slight panic attack by Hugh Davidson. It was time to get rid of that one a bit more comfortably. John Paul McBride will take it. Deflected away by Davidson. Paul Kane's header in from Gary Bullen. Kept in well by Danny Griffin. And it was Morris Malpass who cleared. McBride's pass too heavy for Kane. Stephen Thompson's first touch. Getting away from Darren Dodds, driving the ball in. It was a good deal. Tough tackling from St. Johnson wins it back, but Paul King took too long. United lose it in turn. John O'Neill, good run from John Paul McBride. Yes, sir. Jim Hamilton thought he'd scored his fourth goal for Dundee United, but good reactions from Ferguson to make the save. Offside flag is up. Ignored, or possibly not seen by Jim McCoskey. Half-time whistle goes. And then a dull and disappointing first half. Jim Hamilton close, agonisingly close for him, to opening the scoring late on. It was he who flicked the ball out wide to Craig Easton. And Easton flighted in a clever ball, which took a faint touch off the head of David Hanna. And the shot from Hamilton looked the scorer, but that was good anticipation and good goalkeeping from Alan Ferguson. Two teams who know each other well, and it showed in this first half. It's nil-nil. Well, you would feel, feel, feel fairly safe in predicting that the second half will be better than the first. Antoine Prégier lifting the ball. Darren Patterson, the offender there. Studs were up. Tackle was a bit wild. Jim McCluskey awarding a free kick. And this looks to be in a good striking position for Gary Bolan. Left instead to Danny Griffin! That's a great goal from Griffin! 
six minutes into the second half. In a game of little excitement, we have the opening goal. It looked to be set for a shot for Gary Boland, but instead it was teed up by Kane for Griffin. It was a swerving shot across young Paul Gallagher. He got a hand to it, but he couldn't keep this out. It was swerving, it was difficult. Gallagher might well be disappointed that he couldn't turn that one round the post. Good play from John O'Neill. Teasing and testing. And a good ball, it's beyond Gallagher. And a chance almost for Treasure on the six yard box. Stretched out. They couldn't make contact. Losing out to Malpass. Hamilton. There was the touch from McBride. Away from goalkeeper Gallagher. There looked to be some contact. And skipper Ian Jenkins made a good job of the defending. The ball on corner kick. Good handling from Gallagher. Rolls it clear to Telesnikov. His pass intercepted by John Paul McBride. Tremendous stuff, good ball in from John O'Neill. And headed behind by Morris Malpass. Lovely ball in from O'Neill after a fairly outrageous back heel from John Paul McBride. from deep inside his own half the exchange of passes with McBride veering away from Patterson a well-paced pass for Connolly and almost on the end of it Patterson to Jenkins Small pass again. In towards Jim Hamilton. Ferraz two. Turned away by Jones. McBride took too long. Pasquale threaded it through. Almost set up a chance for United. Here's to Lesnikov. What can the little Israeli do? Not a lot. He's lost possession. John O'Neill to Nathan Lyons. Lyons might go it alone here. He certainly does. Two minutes of injury time played. Nathan Lyons does it again. He came on as a sub against Rangers ten days ago to great effect. His goal late on grabbed the point for St Johnston. This time he scores the goal, which ensures that... St Johnston will beat Dundee United for the first time this season. It's 2-0, and for Nathan Lyons, it's his 11th goal of the season. Drilled away from Gallagher, just inside the post. A great finish, St Johnston 2 up. No, oh, they're a beaten team. And there's the final whistle, which proves it. After... Three straight defeats at the hands of Dundee United. St Johnston beat their rivals. Danny Griffin scored goal number one, the swerving effort after the free kick across Gallagher and into the far corner. And then super sub Nathan Lowndes did it again, two minutes into stoppage time from an angle, just as he did against Rangers, driving the ball into the far corner. Another valuable goal. And we always seemed a team that was likely waiting on them to do something. And as soon as they scored, uh, we picked ourselves up. And while we didn't create a great deal, we always played in their last third for a part of the game. So it was it was disappointing. In the third, because there's a lot of teams now and not many points between them. Very tight. I've always said uh, Celtic and Rangers apart. 
Uh, I think we can sometimes beat them in the win-off. But I think uh, from Hearts, uh, or in this case Motherwell down, I think any, any team has a chance against each other. It's on the day and it's how you prepare and how they are prepared mentally and physically to win that battle uh, because it is a battle.